No matter how you dress up a burger deal, it's still just a burger and fry. Fast forward about 30 some years and the impossible burger was brought into our world. If you don't eat meat, finding a meat alternative might seem impossible. The impossible Making headlines just about He's everywhere. Buying it. In Consumer Watch, plant-based alternatives to meat. So should Nebraska's thriving beef and cow- I suggest you wear a little bib of sorts. I mean, do, you, do you think they- If you're wondering where we are now, when it comes to impossible burgers and alternative meats, well, we're still far from a real transition, especially when it comes to Southeast Asia. According to reports, even though Southeast Asia saw a 440% increase in vegan and vegetarian plant-based product launches between 2016 and 2020, among 279,000 tons of alternative protein sold across six Southeast Asian nations, only 0.07% came from meat and seafood substitutes like plant-based meat. My name is Dominic. I'm the CEO of Pop Foods. Actually, one of our chefs, he tried to cook impossible or beyond meat. And uh, he said that the, the taste is just very hard to adapt to our menu here in Indo. We need to put hyper-local taste in our product. While global markets for alternative or plant-based meats are projected to reach $450 billion by 2040, Southeast Asia is still in its early days when it comes to plant-based meats. So when will the wave of plant-based meat products change Southeast Asian appetite? And if so, what are the steps to get there? In Southeast Asia, plant-based foods are not new. In this part of the world, tofu, tempeh, and mock meats are a common sight in street foods and hawker centers. Southeast Asia is incredibly diverse, and it has radically different consumption patterns uh, than you would see in the West. In addition to that, when you look at the raw materials that are available in the supply chain, that is what these plant-based proteins are going to be formed out of, there is a very different set of crops. So I think there's a massive opportunity to create a brand new set of products that is very distinct from the West that caters specifically to the tastes of consumers in Southeast Asia. Reports suggest that seven in 10 Southeast Asian consumers have recently tried an alternative plant-based food diet, where 53% of people who've tried plant-based foods have done so because they feel they are healthier, and 24% made the choice out of concerns for the environmental impact of livestock farming. This means that although alternative meats currently occupy a small share of the foods market, a societal values shift towards a more conscious mindset and the younger millennials population becomes the dominant purchasing power in our economies. Alternative meats have an opportunity to take over market share from animal-based products. Ultimately, you will see consumers who will say that we want this. We want to eat food that we like, which is better for us. And so I think that over time, you will see that as consumers see that this technology, that these foods have arrived, they will want them to be available in their local markets and in their local preferences as well. According to our research, a gap in the market which alternative meats can occupy and thus result in a substantial growth in popularity among Southeast Asian consumers hinges on four key factors converging. As previously mentioned in this video, there is growing evidence that consumers in the region are likely to adopt more vegetables into their diet. Countries such as Indonesia and Thailand, over 40% and 30% respectively, indicated their likeness in becoming vegan or vegetarian in the next 12 months. Reports show that 80% of consumers of Green Rebel, an Indonesian vegan food brand, are flexitarians, seeking the health benefits of a plant-based food diet rather than seeking to become vegetarians or vegans. Millennials, the once upon a time up and coming generation, is now entering their mid 30s and 40s. As a result, millennials are shaking up industries everywhere and Gen Z consumers are right behind them, who by all accounts are even more ground-shaking than their predecessors. Along with other earth-conscious and health-related trends, younger consumers are a lot more aware of how much meat they eat, where it comes from, and how often they choose to indulge in meat-based meals. As per Didier Chenot, the younger generation understand the impact of their consumption on the environment and place more importance on their health and diet. Hopefully in the next five years, at least eight to 10% of the younger generation will consume plant-based foods at least two to three times a week. As encouraging as the figures regarding plant-based diets are, the key to consumer acceptance is parity. 
Predictions indicate that in the next two to three years, plant-based meats will reach price parity with animal meats. This will happen in three stages. Plant-based alternatives such as burgers, dairy, and egg substitutes made from soy, pea, and other proteins will achieve parity in 2023, if not sooner. Alternative proteins made from microorganisms like fungi, yeasts, and single-celled algae will reach parity by 2025. Alternatives grown directly from animal cells will reach parity by 2032. The last condition on our list has to do with the availability and formats with which consumers come across alternative meats. A critical pillar to drive growth is to seamlessly integrate with consumer food choices and habits, negating the mystique around such products. A great example is Thai plant-based brand Meat Zero, which is available in ready-to-cook and ready-to-eat formats at modern trade convenience stores and 7-Elevens across the country. And they are not alone. New brands are also catering to local tastes, such as Green Butcher's Indonesian flavors and Singapore-based Karana's jackfruit-based meat strips and mincemeat. Considering these four conditions, some companies are set on developing their own technologies. There are three technology stacks that matter. There is the plant-based technology stack, a microorganism-based technology stack, and a cell-based technology stack. That is the cultivated, where animal cells are being grown outside the animal. With plants, you get a tremendous nutritional profile. With microbes or, or microorganism-based technologies, you can do things like develop precision proteins. Cell-based, you can really mimic the taste and texture very well. And we can possibly envision a future which is hybrid. Imagine that you create products where you get the nutrients from the plants, the, the proteins from microorganisms, and the taste and texture from cells. But whether alternative meats can truly be integrated into the mainstream consumer's purchasing habits is still an unproven hypothesis that is yet to be tested in practice. As it stands right now, the taste, nutritional content, and lack of scale of plant-based meats means plant-based brands may face strong competition from other technologies to address Southeast Asia's future protein needs in the next 10 years.